Good morning. Welcome as we come to worship on this day the Lord has made. I ask this morning for prayers for Megan Ott. She is back in Children's Hospital. She's had a good long stretch of nothing in the hospital, but now she's back in, so please keep her in your prayers. Today, later in the service, we'll have anointing for healing. And also today, all reports are due in the office, so Kathy can start tomorrow morning to put the book of reports together for the congregational meeting, which will be on November the 13th. Today at 5.15, we'll have Kids Club and Catechism. At 6.30, the Luther League will meet. Um, it's that time of year. Thanksgiving's not too far away, and the kids are going to be selling nut rolls and apricot rolls. There's a sign-up sheet to order your apricots and nut rolls on the table in the North X. Uh, you can order up till November the 13th, and then pick them up here at the church November the 20th, so you them good and fresh for Thanksgiving. Bible study will be this week again. It'll be our last week in this session of Bible study, so we'll meet Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and then again Thursday morning at 9 o'clock. And those who come out Thursday morning, uh, we're going to load uh, Ron and my, my vehicles with the stuff for Stuff the Truck, so if you can um, hang out a little bit later from uh, Bible study to help load, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Next Saturday is our convocation, and I look forward to it even though it's going to be a very busy week. But ne then next Sunday is Reformation, and Pastor White, who is, one, is our speaker at the convocation, will be with us, and we're having, showing hospitality by having the fellowship meal down at the Grove. Today is your last day to sign up for that dinner, so if you've not signed up yet, please do so. So we have a, a good number of what should be coming. Then the following Sunday, November 6th, is All Saints Sunday, as we remember all those who have passed away since the last All Saints Sunday. Are there any other announcements or concerns to come in front of the congregation? If not, let's quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare for worship by listening to the prelude.
Please rise. We gather for worship as we should live our lives in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please kneel if you are able. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise as we sing hymn number 389.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Son, Son of the Father, Lord God, have a thought, you who take pray. Forgive the faults of your people, O Lord, that our slavery to sin, in which we fail in our weakness, may be overcome by your liberating work. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is written in the fourth chapter of Genesis, beginning at the first verse. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry and his face fell. And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well... Sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. 
You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest anyone who found him should attack him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 5 by Asterisk. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken to my cry for help, my King and my God. For I make a prayer to you. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. Early in the morning, I make my appeal and watch for you. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness. And evil cannot dwell with you. Braggarts cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those who work wickedness. You destroy those who speak lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful, O Lord, you abhor. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will go into your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in we of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of those who lie in wait for me. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouth. There is destruction in their heart. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Declare them guilty, O God. Let them fall because of their schemes. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out. They have rebelled against you. But all who take refuge refuge in you will be glad. They will sing out their joy forever. You will shelter them. So that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. You will defend them with your favor as with a shield. The second lesson for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost is written in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to stand beside, stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel this morning, according to the 18th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I give. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Now they were bringing even infants to him that they might touch him, 
When the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. But Jesus called to them, called them to him, saying, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you. You may be seated and children come, come forth. Good morning. Were you listening to that last part of the gospel reading? After the clear end, what were people bringing to Jesus? Infants, infants and small children. So why would they be bringing children to God, to Jesus? Basically, maybe some had something wrong with them and Jesus could heal them, but also to bless them so they could walk in his ways better and know about him. And the disciples said, no, 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 he's too busy a guy. He doesn't have time for these kids. Get him out of here. But Jesus says, no, let them come. Then he says, unless you have faith like a child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's important. You've got to keep a childlike faith like you have now when you get older, even when you get as old as me and older. You don't question God now. You'll come a time in your life where you'll start questioning God. You'll start asking all sorts of questions inside your head. What you have to remember is what I was told by a pastor friend of mine when he was in seminary, Karl Barth, who was a theologian in the 1900s, you don't even know who he is, but what he said. He was at the seminary, and many of the seminarians were around him, the students were around him, and asked him, what, how would you sum up the gospel? How would you sum up the good news about Jesus Christ? And he started saying, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. A simple children's song, hopefully you know it. Everybody back there should know it. And that's what we have to remember the most as we go through life to keep a childlike faith that Jesus loves us. That's all we need to know throughout this life and to love him back. Let's fold our hands and bow our head. Dear Heavenly Father, look upon these children and bless them. Let them feel the love you have for them. Let them keep the faith that they have now as a child, now and forever. We pray this all in your holy name and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you all. I love preaching. Well, I love it when I don't have those weeks where Saturday night I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to say. But I also love visiting shut-ins. And I love Sunday evenings with Kids Club and Catechism and Luther Lig. And I love going to a Bible study that's finishing up this week. A couple of weeks ago at Kids Club, I was talking to the kids about sin and re receiving forgiveness at sin of, at Holy Communion. And I asked the kids, what is sin? And they gave me some good answers, things that they did wrong, things that are bad. But then I told them, sin is any time you focus on yourself and not God. And they pondered that a while. But any time we think of ourselves, as a pastor told me years ago, when you become belly button people and you look in on yourself, you're sinning. But when you focus on God, you're doing okay. You're focused on him and what he wants you to do in serving others. 
We are not to be self-centered, but God-centered. This past week in our Bible study, we're going through the Philippians book. We're in the third chapter, one more to go, and that's this week. And it opens up with Paul giving a warning to the people in Philippi, warning against the dogs. Who were the dogs? The dogs are people they call the Judaizers. They were people who were raised Jewish or came to Judaism and now believe in Christ, and they would follow Paul. Wherever Paul went, when Paul left, they would come in. And they would say, yes, it's good what Paul told you, you're saved by Christ, but you need to do a little more. You need to follow those laws of Moses. You need to be circumcised. And Paul was saying, beware of them. Their teaching is false. They're saying everything that you need to do, but I tell you, I've done that and more. Paul says he was circumcised on the eighth day, showing his parents were faithful to the law. They were raising him as a good Jew. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. He knew his heritage. He was a Hebrew among Hebrews. He was a Pharisee, which meant he was brought up knowing the law. He was being taught the law. And to that end, he was always watching if someone was breaking the law. He was so zealous for Judaism that he persecuted the church. Anybody that believed in Christ, if he could, he wound them up so they could be persecuted and perhaps even killed until his conversion. And then Paul says, all that is rubbish. All that he said he did, that he was a Hebrew, a Pharisee, none of that meant anything. And the word rubbish here in the Greek actually means horse manure. All that he did before his conversion meant nothing but a pile of poop. The Judaizers were trying to place a burden on believers, things that they said they had to do. It's like Jacob's Ladder. My former pastor, before I became a pastor myself, hated that song, We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder. Why? Because it makes it sound we have to do good works in order to get up to God. It's all about works righteousness, and that could be further from the truth. For it's Christ that came down to earth that did it all for us. There is absolutely nothing we can do to earn our salvation. God has done it all in sending Jesus Christ to us, who did it all by dying on the cross and rising from the dead. When we do good at church, when we do good out in public, we should be doing it to the glory of God because of everything that Christ has done for us and focus on God. In our gospel reading, Jesus is speaking to a crowd like he usually is, and it says he is speaking to some who thought kind of highly of themselves. They were self-righteous, and they looked down upon others with contempt. Now, most people right away go to, well, he's talking about the Pharisees, and I'm sure he is. For the Pharisees were quite known for looking down upon other people. They were raised to think they were better than everybody else. But he was talking to others too, probably including the disciples. As we've seen in the series, The Chosen, the disciples often were arguing amongst themselves. Now we know that's just a movie depiction, but let's face it, the disciples were human. They wanted to be above each other, as humans tend to be. They wanted to see who had the most power, who did Jesus like best, who did Jesus rely on. And they probably had some contempt, especially for Matthew, the tax collector, because nobody liked a tax collector. But Jesus says and decides to tell them a parable about a Pharisee and a tax collector who go to the temple to pray. Now, it's good to go to God's house. It's good to take time to pray. But let's look at how they prayed. The Pharisee goes to the center when he enters where he can be noticed. And he stands there right in front of everybody with his hands out and looking up to heaven. 
very pious and a very superior attitude. He was raised with passion for the law. And not only did he keep the laws, but he kept all the laws of Moses and then all the man-made laws that the Pharisees had set up over the years. Laws that it was impossible for everyone to obey. But what did he say when he started this prayer? He started with, I thank you, God. Good way to start. But that's all the further he got. He then went into, I am so thankful that I am not like this extortioner and this unjust person or this adulterer and especially this tax collector. Then he goes down through a list of things he has done, like tithing and fasting and keeping the laws. He was completely focused on himself for what he had done, for who he is. He was not focusing on God. Now let's look at the tax collector. Tax collectors were completely hated by the Jews. They were traitors. They worked for the oppressors, the conquerors, the Romans. And not only that, often they added on more to the taxes and they would keep the extra for themselves, making themselves rich. The tax collector came in the temple and went far off. He didn't want to be noticed by anybody. He could not lift his eyes to heaven, but kind of cowardly bowed his head and lowered his eyes. He beat his breast in repentance and in distress, and he prays, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He's at the point of pleading and begging for forgiveness, and Jesus says, The tax collector was justified. He was made right by God. The tax collector focused on God. The Pharisee did not. He focused on himself. Jesus then says, one who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Unfortunately, we all have moments where we're like the Pharisee. We may thank God, we may boast at what we had done and how we do it. We may even tell God how he should do his job, what we want him to do and how we want him to do it and how soon we want it done. And we focused on ourselves and not on him. And there were many times, especially when we need help, that we humbly come to God, when we pray simply to God, Be merciful to me, a sinner. And then we get it right. We focus on God. God sees us as we are, not as the world sees us. We are justified. We are made right by God, by his grace through faith. A theme you will hear a lot more about next week. But till then, go. Focus on God, not on yourself. Learn to be humble. Yes, we are justified. And why? Because Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Amen. Let us join in singing hymn number 403.
please rise as we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, may we focus on you and not on ourselves. Lead us to be humble and sincerely have us come to you in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Guidance Spirit, please give guidance and wisdom to church leaders. We especially pray for our Bishop Dan Salbo, his staff, and his wife Mary. We pray for our mission district. Be with all pastors and lay people who stand on your word. Lord, in your mercy. Your King of the universe, we ask you to give wisdom and guidance to President Joe Biden. We ask for you to be with Governor Tom Wolf, with our legislators and local elected officials. May they all place their faith in you. Lord, in your mercy. God, our protector, be of all those serving in the military, especially those who are in harm's way. We also pray for first responders, our police officers and firefighters, along with those serving as EMTs and in the ERs. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, calm the areas of violence in the world, especially in Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. God, your word is life, and there are so many who have not heard of you. Raise up and call men and women to serve you as pastors and lay worship leaders who faithfully follow you. Lord, in your mercy. Healing spirit, be with those who need your healing hand, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We especially pray for Megan Ott, for Pastor Gerald Myers, for Chuck and Mary Ann Wyant, for Barry Moyer, for Ken and Janet Blau, for Carl Wildner, for Mary Ann Birch, for Bill Hood, for Carrie DeNorsey, for Daniel Logar, and for Vicki Trent, and for those we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort be with those who mourn and grieve for their loved ones. Give your comfort to the day we are all united in your heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, please be seated and sing hymn 296 and then 294, and those who want to be anointed for healing may come forth.
Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant Janet. Make hold that which is broken. Heal her, Lord, she continue to serve you with all the saints, now and forevermore. Amen. Happy for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant Jerry. Make hold that which is broken. Heal him, Lord, she continue to serve you with all the saints, now and forevermore. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant Ellen. Make hold that which is broken. Heal them, Lord, to continue to serve you with all the saints, now and forevermore. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant, Diane. Make hold that which is broken. Heal her, Lord, to continue to serve you with all the saints, now and forevermore. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant, Donna. Make hold that which is broken. Heal her, Lord, she continues to serve you of all the saints, now and forevermore. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant, Bussy. Make hold that which is broken, Lord. Heal him, so we continue to serve you of all the saints, now and forevermore. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant, Mary. Make hold that which is broken, Lord. Heal him, Lord, to continue to serve you of all the saints, now and forevermore. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant, Susan. Make hold that which is broken. Heal her, Lord, to continue to serve you of all the saints, now and forevermore. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant, Vicki. Make hold that which is broken. Heal her, Lord, and continue to serve you now and forevermore. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon Jim. Renew him, Lord, give him your spirit. Make hold that which is broken, so continue to serve you of all the saints now and forevermore. Amen. Father in Jesus' name, Send your spirit upon your servant, Harry. Make hold that which is broken. Heal him, Lord, and continue to serve you of all the saints, now and forevermore. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant, Dolly. Make hold that which is broken, so that she can continue to serve you of all the saints, now and forever. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant, Rick. Make hold that which is broken. Heal him, Lord, and continue to serve you with all the saints, now and forevermore. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant, Joni. Make hold that which is broken. Heal her, Lord, and continue to serve you with all the saints, now and forevermore. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servant Cindy. Make whole that which is broken. Heal her, Lord, and continue to serve you of all the saints, now and forevermore. Amen. You may depart in peace. Please rise. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may Almighty God, who is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, bless you and guide you from this day forth and forevermore. Amen. Let us join in singing hymn number 401. <laughs> 